welcome back to my channel. This is Megan Teacher Pulain and today I will be discussing about Piaget's Theory of Cognitive Development. Piaget's Theory of Cognitive Development explains how a child constructs a mental model of the world. He disagreed with the idea that intelligence was a fixed trait and regarded cognitive development as a process which occurs due to biological maturation and interaction with the environment. Piaget was the first psychologist to make a systematic study of cognitive development. His contributions include a stage theory of child cognitive development, detailed observational studies of cognition in children, and a series of simple but ingenious tests to reveal the different cognitive abilities. What PJ wanted to do was not to measure how well children could count, spell, or solve problems as a way of grading their IQ. What he was more interested in was the way in which fundamental concepts like the very idea of number, time, quantity, causality, justice, and so on emerge. For Piaget's work, the common assumption in psychology was that children are merely less competent thinkers than adults. Piaget showed that young children think in strikingly different ways compared to adults. According to PJ, children was born with a very basic mental structure, genetically inherited and evolved, on which all subsequent learning and knowledge are based. The goal of the jury is to explain the mechanisms and processes by which the infant and then the child develops into an individual who can reason and think using hypotheses. To Piaget, cognitive development was a progressive reorganization of mental processes as a result of biological maturation and environmental experience. Children construct an understanding of the world around them, then experience discrepancies between what they already know and what they discover in their environment. There are three basic components to Piaget's cognitive theory. The schemas, assimilation and accommodation, and the Piaget's four stages of cognitive development. Schemas. Imagine what it would be like if you did not have a mental model of your world. It would mean that you would not be able to make so much use of information from your past experience or to plan future actions. Schemas are the basic building blocks of such cognitive models and enable us to form a mental representation of the world. Piaget defined the schema as a cohesive, repeatable action sequence possessing component actions that are tightly interconnected and governed by a core meaning. In more simple terms, Piaget called the schema the basic building block of intelligent behavior, a way of organizing knowledge. Indeed, it is useful to think of schemas as units of knowledge, each relating to one aspect of the world including objects, actions, and abstract concepts. Wadsworth suggests that schemata, the plural of schema, be thought of as index cards filed in the brain, each one telling an individual how to react to incoming stimuli or information. When PJ talked about the development of a person's mental processes, he was referring to increases in the number and complexity of the schemata that the person had learned. When a child's existing schemas are capable of explaining what it can perceive around it, it is said to be in a state of equilibrium, a state of cognitive balance. Piaget emphasized the importance of schemas in cognitive development and described how they were developed or acquired. A schema can be defined as a set of link mental representations of the world, which we use both to understand and to respond to situations. 
The assumption is that we store these mental representations and apply them when needed. For example, a person might have a schema about buying a meal in a restaurant. The schema is a stored form of the pattern of behavior which includes looking at a menu, ordering food, eating it, and paying the bill. This is an example of a type of schema called a script. Whenever they are in a restaurant, they retrieve this schema from memory and apply it to the situation. The schemas PJ described tend to be simpler than this especially those used by infants. He described how, as child gets older, his or her schemas become more numerous and elaborate. Piaget believed that newborn babies have a small number of innate schemas, even before they have had many opportunities to experience the world. These neonatal schemas are the cognitive structures underlying innate reflexes. These reflexes are genetically programmed into us. For example, babies have a sucking reflex which is triggered by something touching the baby's lips. A baby will suck a nipple, a comforter, or a person's finger. Piaget therefore assumed that the baby has a sucking schema. Similarly, the grasping reflex which is elicited when something touches the palm of a baby's hand or the rooting reflex, in which a baby will turn its head towards something which touches its cheek, are innate schemas. Shaking a rattle would be the combination of two schemas, grasping and shaking. Assimilation and Accommodation John Piaget viewed intellectual growth as a process of adaptation to the world. This happens through assimilation, accommodation, and equilibration. Assimilation, which is using an existing schema to deal with a new object or situation. Accommodation, this happens when the existing schema does not work and needs to be changed to deal with a new object or situation. Equilibration. This is the force which moves development along. PJ believed that cognitive development did not progress at a steady rate, but rather in leaps and bounds. Equilibrium occurs when a child's schema can deal with most new information through assimilation. However, an unpleasant state of disequilibrium occurs when new information cannot be fitted into existing schemas. Equilibration is the force which drives the learning process as we do not like to be frustrated and will seek to restore balance by mastering the new challenge. Once the new information is acquired, the process of assimilation with the new schema will continue until the next time we need to make an adjustment to it. Piaget's Four Stages of Cognitive Development John Piaget's theory of cognitive development suggests that children move through four different stages of intellectual development which reflect the increasing sophistication of children's thought. Each child goes through the stages in the same order, and child development is determined by biological maturation and interaction with the environment. Although no stage can be missed out, there are individual differences in the rate at which children progress through stages, and some individual may never attain the later stages. Piaget did not claim that a particular stage was reached at a certain age, although descriptions of the stages often include an indication of the age at which the average child would reach each stage. Sensory motor stage, birth to two years. The main achievement during this stage is object permanence, knowing that an object still exists even if it is hidden. It requires the ability to form a mental representation of the object. Pre-operational stage, two to seven years. During this stage, young children can think about things symbolically. 
This is the ability to make one thing, a word or an object, stand for something other than itself. Thinking is still egocentric, and the infant has difficulty taking the viewpoint of others. Concrete operational stage, 7 to 11 years. Piaget considered the concrete stage a major turning point in the child's cognitive development because it marks the beginning of logical or operational thought. This means the child can work things out internally in their head rather than physically try things out in the real world. Children can conserve number, age 6, mass, age 7, and weight, age 9. Conservation is the understanding that something stays the same in quantity even though its appearance changes. Formal operational stage, 11 years and over. The formal operational stage begins at approximately age 11 and lasts into adulthood. During this time, people develop the ability to think about abstract concepts and logically test hypotheses. Thank you for listening. For more related videos about this topic, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye!